Hey, hey, everybody, this is Larry. This is day 14 of the September League Code Daily Challenge. Uh, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, join me on Discord, and let's get started on House Robber. Uh, okay, I think I've seen a similar problem before, but basically, you can rob two adjacent houses. Um, and yeah, just don't rob two adjacent houses. Uh, let's see, I think there's a variation where you could uh, wear loops around, but it doesn't appear to be this case. So this is a very straightforward dynamic programming, uh, and when I say straightforward, I you know I don't want it to sound intimidating, but and we'll walk through it together because I have an understanding of it to the uh, of this problem. But basically, for dynamic programming, uh, we're just gonna and one thing that I want to talk about uh, maybe a little bit, and if you already solved this or whatever, is that um, this is a symmetric one. Um, and what I mean by that is that you could go forward from left to right or right to left with the same thing. Uh, and it'll give you the right answer. And you could kind of prove the symmetry. Um, because if, um, because you know, uh, if you're going from left to right, uh, you could, and you're going from right to left, you could just convert it from one another by reversing the array, right? And in this case, there's nothing, uh, there's no order, there's no, there's no like, okay, there's some weird asymmetry that happens if you like only care about the left of a house or something like that, right? So anyway, so that's just an observation. And by that, I mean that you can go from n to zero or one to, or zero to n or something like that in either direction and that'll be okay. Um, why do I talk about that? Because what, even though I'm going to do this top down and then, you know, I'll have a link below on how I talk about the dynamic programming progression. Um, one thing that tricks that gets a little bit tricky when you do that conversion from top down to bo bottoms up is uh, the ordering of indexes, right? And and it's a lot easier to do that with symmetric um, problems. You want to call it that dynamic programming uh, ordering because, well, you could go in either direction and it will still be right. Um, but there are certain problems where that's not the case. So I want you to be... You know, when you're solving this, when you're thinking about it, just be mindful of that so that when you're converting it, um, everything is moving in the same direction. And that'll be something that I would talk about. But yeah, given that n is equals to 100, this should be straightforward. I think we can do this in linear time. Uh, but basically, um, for this problem, for dynamic programming, we just want to consider um, the suffix uh, or the prefix. Like I said, it depends on which direction you want to go. But for me, I'm going to... Um, Think about the suffix of the problem. And what I mean by that is, okay, so you have one problem that has four elements, and then you have one problem that has only three elements, you have a problem that has two elements, and one problem that has only one element, right? And then you try to build off that. Uh, and I'm gonna jump straight to it with my recursion, and <laughs> I'm probably on some list somewhere talking about uh, robbing houses. These, they need to be uh, <laughs> a little bit more, less criminal-y. But in either case, um, yeah, and and one other thing, um, because I am, you know, familiar with this problem, I am talking a little bit more in detail. So I, one thing that I see people do is just like have a nums array, and then, um, and then you know, if something like if nums is equal to zero, uh, you know, return zero, something like that, right? Where you, you know, your your naive, your naive um, recurrence is going to be like, oh yeah, let's just get you know the something like that, where you you only get the suffix, and then you create new arrays to that. And it's a good practice to think of your states and a good practice to kind of reduce this to kind of just think about uh, memory storage. Uh, and from this, we know that, you know, we only, we don't need the entire array. And most of the time we don't need the entire array. We only need the index of the current element. So that's the thing that we're going to, um, uh, you know, make that change to. But that's just something that I've noticed as well for beginner dynamic programmers. Um, but yeah, so now let, let's just set, set up if uh, n is equal to n number of houses. If, if index is equal to n, that means that we finished all the houses. Um, but let's actually even make it just so that our math is slightly better. Um, let's make it if it goes over n, because I think in this case you can go if you're lazy, uh, you can go over n plus one, but in either case, the zero is the answer, right? Um, and then now, what is our max? So there are only two two decisions. To, when we get a given house, assume that we already, you know, don't care about the houses to the left. So if we're at nine, we don't care about the houses to the left because, 
you know, they're taken care of. Of We're just thinking about a suffix, right? So there are only two decisions you can make here. One is to take the nine. And if you take the nine, that that means that you cannot uh, take the adjacent house. So you have to skip the three. So if you take the nine, you jump straight to one. So that's, um, that's one of the decisions that we can make. So best is you go to get max of index plus two, uh, plus whatever we got from the index, right? So nums sub index. And so it's either this or given that we're still at the nine, uh, we don't take this nine and then we just go to the next house and it'll be okay, right? So yeah, so this is our answer and we could just return it. And that's pretty much the problem. Um, and why does this work, right? It's because, uh, at, you know, for dynamic programming, there is an invariant in which, for example, I'm talking from the nine again, that means that we know that we don't have to care about everything on the left because previous decision ensured that we would not violate the two adjacent houses situation. Um, so, okay. So this is it, and then we just have to do return get max of zero, uh, starting at the zero index. We can run it, and of course, I don't do any memorization. Uh, I just wanted to show you how this runs without it, and we'll, we'll do it, the memorization, don't worry. Uh, but this is how we think about the recursion, right? Uh, yeah, and in this case, and if you really... Um, if you really you know, want to learn some trivia, uh, you can notice that... Uh, you know, get max of index only gets max of index plus one and min index minus, uh, sorry, index plus one and index plus two. And if you do it the other way around, you'll notice that it goes index minus two and index minus one, right? Like if you reverse it the other way. And the fun fact about that is that um, from that, it becomes the uh, Fibonacci sequence. Um, in terms of the number of steps you need. So if you don't memorize, it would take roughly, um, it will be exponential, but it won't actually technically be two to the end. It will be 1.6 to the end or something like that. Or, you know, 1.16 of phi to the end, uh, which is the, you know, the, um, the Fibonacci number. Uh, so that's kind of a little bit of trivia for fun. But anyway, but yeah, but once we know that, that means that this is going to be really slow, right? Because for if you go 1.6 to the, I don't know, 20, okay, actually that's not that big. But, um, okay, let's say you have 40 numbers, right? Uh, the 40 40th Fibonacci number is like 140 million, and that's going to be too slow, uh, where obviously if you just memorize it, it will take 40 times or something like that, right? So, and that's what we're going let, to, let's get started on the uh, memorization. So I usually do it this way for teaching. There may you may see other people's code using different things. Uh, I focus on the teaching, so this is why I do the things we do. Uh, let's just set this as you go to force, um, and you know let's just call it. I call it cache, though. Maybe let's just call it memo. Um, oops, uh, it doesn't matter what it is, but but yeah. And then now of to add the memorization, all we have to do is just to if is calculated of index then return memo of index uh, otherwise memo of you know we do the calculation and then memo of index is equal to best uh, is calculated of index is equal to true and that's all you need right uh, and just for like a uh, comparison um, Let's see, how many did I do? Eight? Sixteen? Twenty-four? Thirty-two? Forty, right? So if you want this code, it should be pretty fast, hopefully. If not, then I, you know, it'll be a little bit sad. Thirty-six millisecond. Uh, and let's, let's, you know, let's say we don't cache it, right? We don't, we don't do the cache. How long would that take? Oof. Just for science. For science. Uh, well, it's, it's taking a long time, put it that way. It may even get time limit exceeded. Wow, I didn't... I thought it would be... A, yeah, okay. So that's kind of the, uh, the the story. So that's why you do memorization. Uh, let, let's do something that's half as long just for science. I thought it would be... I thought it would one just be... Really, oh, okay. I guess it's exponential, but I didn't think this would be that long. Um, 
Thanks for bearing with me. I'm just trying to illustrate the difference. And you can try this at home and figure out how um, how much slower or faster it is. I don't know where, where the magic number is, but but you can see that it clearly is much slower. So I think maybe we'll leave it at that. Uh, nine seconds for uh, for this number, right? Where if you do, you know, if you just do the memorization, it'll be okay. But yeah, uh, definitely try to... Um, Try to practice this, and if you're learn, uh, oh, let me submit it first, because that'll be, I, I mean, this is mostly right. It, it would only be wrong if there's some like weird thing, like, I don't know, weird base case or something. But um, yeah, um, once you solve this problem, try uh, try doing it bottoms up, and then try to remove the space, because you can actually do this. Also similar to Fibonacci, um, where you just keep track of certain variables, so you could do it in constant time. Oh, sorry. You could do it in linear time, but constant space. Uh, so what is the complexity here? Well, uh, there can only be n inputs to get max. So that means that we're going to call this at most n times because it gets memorized. Um, and each of these variables, or uh, each of these function calls, uh, only will do all of one um, work. So this is, so n is equal to the number of inputs. And all of one work, work per input. So total complexity is equal to all of n. Or all of one times, oops, n equals all of n, right? Uh, and space is really easy once you do it this way. I know that people use different ways to memorize, but uh, but you can see that this is linear because we just have linear number of items. Uh, yeah, and yeah, that's why right for this problem. Again, I'll, I'll link below on my. Um, my dynamic program progression video. Um, try to upsolve it to bottoms up. This should be a pretty straightforward. And then you could do the space uh, optimization, which is also simple. So yeah, let me know what you think. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, join me on the Discord, and I will see y'all tomorrow. Bye-bye.